This year is all about trying out different video content ideas for RuneScape. I figured today's update was quite massive on the PVM side, so I should cover it a bit more in depth and clarify what this means for PVM and its players, as I think it's pretty important info. If you enjoy this video, let me know by liking the video and I'll cover more on big updates when they hit. These don't take too much time to make and I've had a lot of good discussions regarding these topics ahead of time, so I am confident when I make these videos, I will give good insights on them. The two main updates I want to go over more in depth are the combat achievement reward system rework and the rates one quality of life update. I will also briefly cover the other small changes after. So if you haven't been keeping up with the combat achievements, it's changed quite a lot from the original introduction. When it first came out, combat achievements were almost purely for the achievement as the best rewards from the CAs were just not that rewarding. Eventually, Jagex added more rewards to combat achievements to attract more players into doing them. Ultimately, Jagex decided to rebrand CAs to be more sought after like achievement diaries. However, getting to certain tiers might have been too annoying for some people such as team related tasks in the higher tiers like hard, elite and beyond. So Jagex in today's update decided to let players reach certain CA tiers without needing to finish all of the tiers respective tasks by adding a new point system to each tier. So specifically Jagex decided to allow players to unlock tiers through points. Higher tiers require more overall points. Different tier tasks gives different amount of points. Easy task gives 1 point, medium task gives 2 points, and the pattern goes to Grandmaster task which gives 6 points, there are 6 tiers. To complete the new tiers, you need 33 points total for easy, 115 for medium, 304 for hard, 820 for elite, 1465 for master, and 2005 for Grandmaster. Keep in mind Grandmaster does not change because to get 2005 points actually would require finishing all the tasks. So you can only reach up to master earlier than before the update. I have a whole playlist detailing the history of combat achievements since day one. So feel free to check that out later if you want to learn how to do various CA tasks. Link above. So what does this mean for players? This means that getting ranks up to master for CAs is now substantially easier. Previously, some tasks, especially in the elite tier and higher, required team effort. And despite this being an MMO, most players prefer to do things solo and team stuff is often the deal breaker for them. So previously, many players would probably stop before hard because there were just too many tasks that were team orientated. Also, some tasks in the same tier can be substantially harder than its peers. This is very true in tasks from tiers elite and higher. Some grandmaster tasks, for example, are easier than some elite and master tasks simply because it's just KC based tasks. So just getting a certain amount of KC is all you need to get that task done. So this point system circumvents the team tasks and especially the more difficult tasks a bit by allowing you to get the points from easy higher tier tasks like KC tasks from let's say elites or GMs. To explain in simpler terms, you can get a lot of free points from easy or elite master or GM tasks to fulfill the point costs of unlocking tiers like elites and masters. So all the KC tasks are free and gives a lot of points, at least compared to some of the counterparts where it's more like you have to kill the boss in a certain time or kill it in certain restrictions. Getting KC is much easier. Take advantage of the KC task now. A lot of players who are already close to reaching hard elite or master after this update should already have them locked due to the free points you got. If not, you would be insanely close. So just get that next tier and get those sizable benefits right now. With the easier access and better save rewards, I can see hard and elite tier being very desirable for players similar to players going for achievement diaries. Hard gives pretty good rewards nowadays such as more cannonball storage, unlimited gobbler teleports, more pest control points per game, more kill sides from like a boss slayer task, and others. Elite is especially enticing because this gives a lot more slayer related benefits such as a 1 in 10 chance to replenish your slaughter expeditious bracelet when it's about to break, and 25% better superior spawn chance. Amazing for Iron Man's or people going for Sir XP and for collection log players to get the MB Hard and Eternal Gem. Masters is more reachable for players giving you things like Lucky Penny and longer thrall spawns and a few more things, but it's still going to be quite a bit challenging to achieve for many players still. And Grandmasters, of course, has not changed. You still have to do all the tasks, 
so that is still mostly a flex at that point the rewards at grandmaster is just a bit better than the previous tiers if i missed any good uses of rewards from the lower tiers feel free to leave your input in the comments next big update i want to talk about is the chambers of Zerg's quality life update Jagex decided to put an actual bank inside the actual start of the raids entrance. They also placed storage boxes right outside Ohm's entrance, making things a little bit easier to get ready for Ohm. This is one of the biggest quality of life updates for raiders, especially soul raiders, because before, if you wanted to bang to customize your setup for that particular layout, it required an extra person to hold a raid. For example, before in solos especially, you would need an alt or a friend to help hold your layout if you wanted to bring an axe for Mudadow or pickaxe for guardians or south for skeletons, or even more brewers if you didn't need tools. Keep in mind though, once the raid starts, you cannot use this bank anymore. Before this update, especially in the early days of Cox, you would have to bring all of the tools with you for every raid solo, and let me tell you, it was a lot harder doing it that way, and also definitely annoying too. But luckily for us, we don't have to worry about that ever again. For example, oftentimes you either do layouts that will have Guardians, Skeletons, and Meldow all in one place. So having a bank before that start is great because sometimes you might not bring an axe and try to get it off scabs in a solo, which can take forever, but you never have to worry about little things like that anymore. It also makes pre potting much easier as well. Say you have a Shaman start. You can pre pot Antidote before starting and never worry about running out. pre pots will also last longer in general since the bank is extremely close to the entrance now. TLDR, every raid you do from now on, whether souls or groups, can be optimized to your heart's desire without any complications or needing ultra friends to hold your raid, regardless of size. The overall layouts you probably would do though isn't going to change much. The idea is still to find the fast layouts to have 3-4 to four bosses, preferably with overloads and have rope room. But this will make scouting way faster as well since it takes away from setting up holding the raid and the solo players that don't hold raids no longer need to ditch a good raid because they lack certain tools for that raid personally this will be huge for me as well as i still need to obtain things from chambers for the log so it'll save a lot of time i did a quick hour test using a new bank chest to save scouting time without any help and i literally saved minutes per raid even group raids should notice some benefits but as a solo the time save was insane i did three raids an hour completely on my own which is way faster than previously. It only takes literally one or two minutes to go from one raid to the next. I would say the overall raid speed, if you include all the scouting, all that stuff, is now at least 10 to 20% faster than before. Absolutely massive update. All right, yeah, this having the bank inside the raid is so nice because I basically did three raids an hour. Uh, normally, you can't really do this, even with best in saw gear unless you had someone constantly scouting for you or or someone holding the way for you but uh yeah i didn't need any of that i just did it on my own and we have some of the other smaller updates trover parchment in wilderness slayer you will now get two instead of one as a drop definitely nicer for iron man style players but definitely prices will go down for sure for those the Trover Parchment is an item that you can use to add on to an untradeable item giving it a charge and if you happen to die to a peak care or you die over 20 wilderness the insurable item that would normally go away or get destroyed and turn to coins to peak cares actually won't happen and you'll keep it and then the effect will go away so some time ago i remember jagex adding looting bags to slayer stores i think it was for gp but then they took that out but now they've added it back instead of gp it's going to cost 10 slayer points a bag it's particularly good for our ultimate iron man but it should be uh, pretty useful in general though and also abyssal lanterns the lantern that helps you at gardens of the rift and you can get it from there instead of just being rng to get you can also buy it with 1.5k pearls should you get unlucky from the guardian of the rift minigame makes sense considering it's only useful in there so it's nice to get the expected upgrade to keep the minigame fresh later on reliably some players ended up getting it too late for it to be useful or just never at all for their rift grinds previously and some other small changes are the wilderness weapons and brace of ethereum now have an add x function don't know why they never had that it's beyond me they also fixed the bug where quick prayers were not turning off consistently in pvp 
that's it boys thanks for watching and give me that like if you want more of these big update coverage videos i don't plan on making a video every week it's just for when the weekly updates are actually massive and will change the game substantially like this got more variety of videos coming this year as i've said so look forward to more see you later